Um, if I look at 2024, it started with such bullishness and euphoria. I come to the end of the first quarter, I've got job cuts, I've got people maybe just stepping back from that level of exuberance. Has it peaked? Look, I think we're, we're coming to the end of the first quarter, which will have been the biggest quarter in investment grade debt issuance in history. It'll be the third biggest uh, quarter in history for leveraged loan issuance. The markets are wide open. And so for us, it's been an extremely busy quarter. We're seeing healthy activity kind of across the piece. We're seeing it, as I mentioned, through investment grade, but also in the leveraged loan and broadly syndicated and private credit space. All of these engines are firing right now for the capital markets and, and for the banks and financial institutions more broadly. Do you think they're still firing on, on, on full momentum or is there any, any hesitation at all creeping in? Well, look, right now, I think part of the, part of the reason the year has been so front loaded is we have an election in the back half of the year. And I think everyone who's looking at the market from the issuer side and the investor side see a lot to like. From the issuer side, spreads are kind of in the bottom 10 percentile of, uh, of history in the last 20 years. And from the investor side, all in yields, based on where we are in rates, are in the top 90 percent, the 90th percentile of where we've been in the last 20 years. And so both are fully engaged, both are at the table, and, and we're just continuing to see activity come through the chute. Okay, so if the activity comes through the chute, looking across, I mean, you have a broad church to, to look after. Um, if I said to you across that suite within investment banking, DCM, ECM, yeah. where is the strongest momentum? And perhaps where is this the strongest momentum going to continue? And let's just cast it forward. Look, I think the, the, the financing markets on, on the debt side are, have really been the engine so far this year. Equity is showing signs of life. As you've seen, we've had a couple of names come through in the IPO market, and hopefully that's a harbinger of positive things to come. M&A is spooling up, though. And if you think about the most important participants in the M&A market, it's our financial sponsor clients. They represent year in, year out about 40% of the volumes. In the last couple of years, things have been pretty quiet. You know, last year's activity was off 35% from 2021. We're now seeing uh, real conviction around engaging in processes, people on the sponsor side really willing to dig in and do the work because the financing markets are there, the economy is in good shape, you know, people are no longer worried about things falling off the cliff that we, yep. were, last, that we were last year. We're seeing that kind of terms, structure and pricing are all kind of coming the, the, the way of asset owners. And, you know, it sounds like said, a loaded gun. But what, 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 <clears throat> what's the distance between powder and the gun and actually pulling that trigger. Honestly, it's just time. I think it's it's time and, and kind of a continued positive tone in the markets. You know, for, for sponsors in particular, when you think about the, the opportunity set in front of them and the amount of pent up demand there is, both on the corporate side for things like carve outs and asset reconfigurations, and from the sponsor side on you know, the interest in transacting on assets that are currently in portfolio, there's a lot of interest on both sides. And now that the financing markets are really there and at the table, we're expecting to see uh, some activity.